All right, folks, so we're about to get started on a guided tour around our facility here at Aquarium Encounters. My name is Ashley. I'm going to talk a little bit about each exhibit, about the feedings you can do today, as well as the encounters you can participate if you'd like to do so. We are going to start down here at our floating bridge. All right, so our first stop here on the um, bridge is going to be on our lagoon, which is technically man-made. It was dredged out back in the 50s. However, everything that you're seeing here has grown back naturally. In our lagoon, we do offer a lagoon snorkel encounter. So guests get into this water. We do have about 30 plus different species of fishes that you can see all throughout the lagoon, which means you can get up pretty close and personal with these animals here. Some of the fishes that you're seeing right off the bat, we've got our very colorful parrot fish, both the blue and rainbow parrots. Just below them are much faster snappers and jacks, typically going to be the shiny colorful fish. All throughout, we also have some tarpon. You'll find that we have two large counter stingrays in here named Betty and Pebbles, and even several bonnethead sharks. Commonly mistaken for their cousin, the great hammerhead, but they are a much smaller species. All right, so now we are here on our island where we have several exhibits. We're gonna start here with the Caribbean spiny lobster, also known as the Florida spiny. So of course, with that name, they do have spines that surround their body, acting as an armor for the animal. We have about 20 individuals here and they're ranging from two to four pounds. However, lobsters are known as an uh, indeterminate growers. So they are actually growing until death. The largest on record for this species, 26 pounds and just over three feet in length. Now, of course, as they continue to grow, they will need to molt or shed that exoskeleton. And we do have an example of that molt right here in our exhibit. We do offer food for these animals all throughout the day so you can purchase a cup they are nocturnal, so they typically hide underneath the rocks, but you offer them that food and they come right out for you as they are doing currently. All right, and here we are at our first tank here on the island. It is called Stingray Cove for the two species of ray that we have in this exhibit. And it does make it one of our three touch tanks here on property. So you're welcome to touch any of these rays as they come up to you gently on their backs or their wings. Uh, the two species here, we have the cow nose ray and the southern cow nose rays are those smaller uh, species that you find swimming around the surface. They are what's called a pelagic species, so you, so you do actually find them more so in open ocean off the coast. Those larger ones that you find more so along the bottom are those southern rays. All four that we have in here are females, which means they can reach to six feet in wingspan and over 200 pounds, doubling the size of male southerns. Those southern rays are bottom dwellers, so they do spend most of their time hanging along the ocean floor, and they do have the flattened out body, able to hide underneath the sand, if at all needing to. So we do have two ways of interacting with this tank here, one of which is along the outside. You can purchase food from our bait shack and uh, feed them right off of a stick along the edges. But we also have another way of interacting and that's getting into this tank if you're feeling a little more adventurous. We'll teach you how to hand feed these animals as they sit right in your lap. Our next tank here is actually the nursery exhibit. So we have a bunch of different species here. Coming up, we've got our two cow nose stingray juveniles. That is Connie and Rachel Ray, both of which were born over in Stingray Cove. And once they are large enough, we'll graduate back over to that tank. Now uh, we do also have our male southern ray coming on up, a juvenile, just a few months old. Everything else in this tank though is pretty much full grown for their species, so they are just much smaller. They remain in this tank as they just cannot compete for food with the larger rays over in Stingray Cove, like our Atlantic Stingray here, with more of the gray coloration to their body and a pointed snout. Even our yellow stingrays, this here is a full grown female. They have that circular body with a pale coloration. And in this tank, we also have two Atlantic guitar fish. They are not a stingray nor a shark, but related to them in the elasmobranch grouping, meaning that they have a cartilaginous skeleton as well. These animals being much smaller, in turn have smaller stomachs, and they have a little more of a strict diet. So we do not offer food all throughout the day, but actually instead offer three encounters. If you'd like to have a personal interaction with them, helping feed these animals in this exhibit. All right, this exhibit here is called Big Shark Bay, and it's home to a few species of fish. That includes two groupers, one snapper, and our nurse sharks. We do have three nurse sharks in here, Notch, Baby, and Swayze, all of which are target trained. So once they go to their correct shape and color, they're actually positively reinforced with food. And that's exactly what enables us to do our Big Shark Bay encounter. So guests get to help with a training session, both feeding and petting these nurse sharks. 
out of two groupers in here, one of which is a little bit larger. His name is Colossal Carl. He is right around an 80 pound Goliath grouper. However, that is tiny. Goliaths can reach to 800 pounds and eight feet in length. The other grouper is the black grouper, and they can be uh, multiple colors here, uh, including all black, all white, or a pattern of the two. They have the ability to change those colors within a matter of seconds, so at times, you're going to catch them right in the middle of the act. And the last fish is our Cubera snapper, having more of a silver shiny coloration to the body, but also possess some very large teeth. That is uh, why he gets the name Fang. He has those teeth for his favorite diet of crustaceans like lobster, breaking into those exoskeletons really easily. All right, so our last exhibit here on the island is going to be our tide pool touch tanks. And that's right, that is going to be our third and final touch tank that we have here. So both the upper and lower pool that we have, you can touch absolutely anything in here. We have some uh, Bahama sea stars here along the top, along with some queen conch, both of which are federally protected animals. So when you are finding conch on a restaurant menu, it is actually imported from places like Jamaica, Turks and Caicos, where they have conch farms. So they are not locally harvested. You'll also find some sea cucumbers. We even have a slipper lobster up here. Along the bottom tank, you'll find our horseshoe crabs. They're actually a prehistoric animal, over 450 million years old. And fun fact, they're actually not a true crab, but instead more related to spiders because of all of the legs that they have underneath. And of course, in between both of our tide pools, you'll find our seahorse tank, where we have the lined seahorse. Now those seahorses throughout the day will have tiny things swimming around in their tank and very commonly mistaken for their babies. But instead, those are their food items. Those are brine shrimp, or also known as sea monkeys. Seahorses do not have a true stomach, so they do need to eat consistently throughout the day. Um, so one seahorse can actually eat up to 3,000 brine in just one day. So we have now ventured over to our Everglades area where we have more so non-native and invasive species. And I'll go over each of those for you today. We do have here our first stop, the African spurred tortoises. Here on this side with me is going to be Rex and the pool on the other side are named after those ninja turtles. All five of which have been donated to us here at the aquarium. As their uh, name implies, they're actually native to the deserts of Africa. Um, they are going to be strictly herbivores, only eating vegetation. So what we have for them here is a bunch of hay, which is what most resembles their native vegetation they'd get out in the desert. But we also do feed them every day at 2.30 with a little treat of veggies, which guests can help with that task there. Now these animals are actually the third largest species of tortoise. So they can reach to 200 pounds and also live to 150 years. Giving you an idea, Rex here is only about 20 years of age and weighing just under 100 pounds. So he has a lot of growing and aging still to do. He's definitely checking me out today. Hello. All right, so this exhibit here is actually for our alligator snapping turtle. His name is Fluffy. They are actually the largest species of freshwater turtle, typically maxing out about 175 pounds. He currently in here is right around 60 to 70, so quite a bit of growing for him to do as well. Now you are noticing that you're not seeing him currently right in front of the exhibit and that is because they are an ambush predator. They do actually hide and wait for their prey all throughout the day. So we do actually have a porthole over to the side and you can look right into his face as he does love to hang out underneath a tree that we have here um, in the exhibit for him. All right, and here on the opposite side of our alligator snapping turtle is its cousin, the common snapping turtle named Porkchop. Now the common snapping doesn't get nearly as large, only reaching a maximum of about 75 pounds or so, but they do bite down with 150 pounds of pressure per square inch. So they are packing quite the punch. They also have a super long neck that reaches halfway down the back of their shell as they are instead more of a hunter searching for their prey. So they can extend that neck to get that prey item. So here we have one of our last freshwater exhibits and that's going to be highlighting the variety of freshwater turtle species that we have here. Now this is a no hands in exhibit and that's because they just do have very sharp beaks and they think uh, most items coming towards them are food. Though we do offer food for them, you can purchase some from the bait shack. We give them some veggies off of a stick and they do love that here. And the variety of species include a bunch and that's gonna be the yellow belly with some yellow tears coming down from their eyes. We do have chicken neck turtles. They have super long necks and even a Florida striped mud in here. Very small turtle, however, it is an adult. So they don't get much larger than what you're seeing in this exhibit. All right. 
All right, so over here in our larger exhibit, we have our American alligator hatchlings. Uh, several of them in this exhibit. Hatchling gators are right around six inches when first born, but within the first few years of life, they are growing at their fastest, up to nine inches a year. Though they typically max out about 15 feet and 1,000 pounds when full grown, they are also indeterminate growers. So the largest on record for an American alligator was 21 feet. Uh, you will find gators throughout Florida as they are native. However, not typically down here in the Keys as they are more of a freshwater animal. And of course, we are surrounded by that salt water. However, you can find some crocodiles, typically right up in Key Largo. There are some good sized ones in those canals. And over here, we're back to our salt water exhibits. And first up, we have our beautiful but highly invasive lionfish. These fish are originally from the Indo-Pacific Ocean on the other side of the world. First seen here in the Atlantic Ocean back in 1985. Now, unfortunately, these fish are just destroying our reef ecosystem, and they're doing so in a few ways. One of which, this animal can actually eat anything and everything that fits into its large mouth and also grow its stomachs 30 times its size. So they are creating quite the competition for native species. They also have 18 venomous spines pretty much surrounding their body, which is quite the defense mechanism. And one female can birth up to two million eggs in just one year. Top that off with the fact that they just don't have natural predators here feeding on them. They are thriving. So there are a few ways that we are trying to rebalance in that circle of life. One of which is you can eat them and they are becoming very popular. They taste a lot like hogfish, so restaurants are incorporating them on the menu as the motto is eat them to beat them. There are also derbies throughout the year, so whoever catches the most wins that money. And there is no weight or size limit on the lionfish. So uh, when you see one out in the ocean, we encourage you to go ahead and spearfish it out. But also in this exhibit, we're gonna have a variety of invertebrates, including a few species of lobster, like the red banded and the spotted lobster. We also have a very large spider crab in here. So here we are now at our larger exhibits at the aquarium, both the coral and predator reef tanks. But I'm gonna start off with the predator reef side. However, it is connected to the coral reef. We have two large acrylic windows directly in the center. Collectively, they are right around 200,000 gallons of water. In this predator reef side, we do have eight sharks total, represented by three different species. Largest of which will be the sandbars, smallest is the black nose, and we do have one black tip as well. You will find a variety of snappers and jacks here, even some tarpon, which have the large silver scales with the upturned mouth. There is going to be nacho, a southern stingray, just like those we saw in Stingray Cove, and even two large green moray eels, both of which are right around six feet. However, they can reach to eight feet in length. Right, so our last stop here on the tour is the Coral Reef Tank. This tank is very special as we do offer that encounter. So guests get into this exhibit. You're either snorkeling or diving. It is really up to you whether you are certified or not. What you're gonna be doing is actually feeding our fishes through a squirt bottle of food. So they are swarming you right in front of your face. We also have two cow nose stingrays in here named Chip and Dale, and you'll be hand feeding them today. And then afterwards, you'll go over to the acrylic windows that I mentioned in the center and actually target feed our sharks, eels, and groupers as all of those animals are actually trained to receive food from guests through specialized holes that we provide. So of course, it is a lot different than going out into the ocean as you will have that 100% visibility at all times and you are feeding these animals. So again, they are swarming you. We do have about 2,000 animals in here all together and over 50 different species, all of which are native here to the Keys. So you can find any one of these fish right here off our coast, making this tank a great representation of that reef ecosystem you'll find here in our water.